Okay, so um, before you start making your presentation, let's look at the requirements and let's look at an example of a finished presentation made by a student and talk about how that person did or met the requirements in the, um, for their presentation. So the first requirement is you need to clearly identify the topic you chose to study in Misguided by Media Path 1 towards the start of your presentation to make it clear to your audience what topic you're covering. Let's we'll see what they did. They say, I decided to do my Misguided by Media on lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people. Okay, cool, they identified their topic. So in this case, that requirement has been met. And so I'll um, do a little strike through on that. Okay, so number two, include the collage you created in Misguided by Media Path 1 that has pictures showing this untrue perception and make it clear in your presentation that this image represents what many Americans think because of the media, not something that you think. So let's see where they did that. So next up they say... Many people believe that people with different sexualities choose to be that way. Okay, that's pretty clear that the person making this doesn't actually think that. Great, and they included their collage. So we're going to do that, and then strike through. You need to include a link to the documentary that you watched, as well as the name of the documentary. Let's see if they do that. So this person, at this point, has included their more truthful message about the topic. I still haven't seen the link to the documentary, so we'll see if they put it in there. But in this case, they did include that more truthful message that they learned. So I'm going to pause and I'm going to skip to the points where they start meeting the requirements. They're adding a lot of um, good background information. But, um, oh, here you go. There's their link to their documentary and the name of the documentary. So they included the name and they included the link. So that works. It makes sense to put this stuff towards the beginning, so then it helps whoever is watching your presentation figure out what those images are that you're going to show them in the next few minutes. Okay, so the next thing you have to do is include a, a series of screen captures from your documentary that show how visual language was used to communicate the more truthful message. And earlier in the steps in Kiro, you had a review of how those different, um, how visual language can be used to either imply a message or associate emotions. And you use words, icons, or images in your presentation to explain why you chose each screen capture. So at least three of the screenshots where an idea was implied to support the more truthful message. And another way to think of this idea or a message was implied to support the more truthful message. And then you need to use words, pictures, and icons to communicate what message was implied in each image and how visual language was used. And then you have to include at least three screenshots from your documentary where an emotion was associated to support the more truthful message. And if you don't remember the difference between these two things, go back in the steps on Kiro, and there's a review lesson that talks about the difference between implying a message or associating an emotion. And then you have to use words and images to do that, too. So as we go on in this documentary, let's take a look at this one. This picture shows how gay people are friendly and normal like everyone else. The lighting gives a normal and calm feeling, while the camera angle shows normality as well. A group of kids laughing together gives you a sense that they're not alone and should make you feel happy. So this person kind of combined both things in one. They talked about how the message being implied. But let's talk about the message being implied. The message being implied that these people are just normal people. And they talked about how the visual language was used because they talked about lighting. They talked about camera angle. They talked about the body language of the people in the, in the film. Same deal. They go on and talk about a message that's being implied through the visual language of the camera angle. And so for this last one, it talks about how this one right here talks about um, camera angle being used to communicate a message. Then the person goes on to associating emotions. So the next one, this one is all about how emotions are associated. Picture shows an open view of a couple walking to the beach together. They talk about the lighting. They talk about the camera angle. And they talk about 
how we're supposed to get an open view and a welcoming feeling. And they talk about the camera angle too. So they're talking about how visual language is used now to communicate a feeling. Same deal in this, in this one, they talk about how visual language is used to, to associate a feeling. And same deal with this and they talk about how it's used to associate an emotion. So they did three images that were used to communicate a message, talked about how that was used for visual language, and three images that were used to associate an emotion, and talked about how visual language was used for that. That's your job.